Hello and welcome, Radiant Lights. I am so excited to be here with you this evening. Ah, so yeah, we're talking about going vegan, going raw vegan, uh, to be specific, <laughs> and how to how to transition into a raw vegan diet. And so I want to welcome you. And who, you know, whatever's brought you here tonight, I want to welcome whatever's, you know, just sort of nudging on your heart around this topic. Some of you are here tonight, you're already vegan. Some of you are here tonight, and maybe you just want to tune into my journey and how it is that I've been transitioning into a raw vegan diet. Or maybe you just want to do it for a brief amount of time because you just want to see what the health benefits might be. So if you um, would do me a favor and go ahead and post in the chat the specific reasons that brought you here tonight. Maybe you're working with clients. Maybe you just want to know more for yourself. I'd love to know what's bringing you here tonight and what is your interest in um uh, in going raw vegan or transitioning into a raw vegan diet for a small amount of time or for a longer period of time like me, 90 days. So thank you. All right. So I just want to offer a disclaimer. I am not um, a medical professional. <laughs> I'm not even a certified health coach. <laughs> And so, um, you know, I just want you to take everything that I'm saying here with a grain of salt. Um, I have been called a radical detox goddess because I've been doing a lot to support my health over the last four years. Well, seven years, really, um, but but four years specifically and I'll I'll say a little bit more about that so that you some of you know who I am and you know my background but some of you don't and so for those of you that don't I want to tell you a little bit more about me and why it is that we're here tonight talking about transitioning into a raw vegan diet so I um I received a breast cancer diagnosis 4 years ago and um that effectively changed everything in my life. I had um, found out about an incredible superfoods company uh, seven years ago, Purium uh, Superfoods. And, you know, I thought I was healthy and I was cleansing and I was doing all the things, you know, but what was happening for me is I was going back to bad habits after a period of cleansing. And so with the uh, breast cancer diagnosis, I was diagnosed um, stage three, uh, two different types of cancers, tumors in both breasts. Thanks, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I can laugh about it now. I've been through a lot. Um, but um, it was it was a shock. It was a huge shock. And so I stopped with the pendulum swinging back and forth with my diet. And I started paying attention deeply to what it was that I was putting in my body and eating more cleanly and eliminating the things that I had learned with the cancer diagnosis that were contraindicated for cancer, um, like sugar, a uh, refined sugar. I want to be very clear because we're going to be talking a lot about fruit tonight. Um, and cow dairy contraindicated for cancer. So I just stopped. I stopped caffeine. I stopped alcohol. I stopped pork and red meat. I really just decided that I needed to clean it all up. And I ended up going to Hope for Cancer, an amazing cancer facility in Tijuana, Mexico. I did their um, year long home support program. And I had three visits there. And the first visit that I had there was three weeks. And in that three week experience, they, um, you know, they tuned into what it was I needed to what kind of a diet I needed. And I pretty much did 
detox uh, protocols all day, every day for three weeks. And it was pretty awesome, to be honest with you. It was really um, sort of the most rest I think I've ever had <laughs> because I was being cared for every day by um, by uh, nurses and I had family members there and I was being fed. I didn't have to cook. I was being fed these beautiful, organic, um, mostly cooked foods. So when I left that three week experience, I, you know, I really enjoyed the food there. It was delicious. It was gourmet. It was far surpassed what I expected, but there was something sort of nagging at me about that. I needed to go deeper, that I needed to go more extreme with my diet. And it was at that point that I had been studying about Dr. Morse, an amazing naturopath in um, uh, Florida. And he had all these amazing regenerative um, detox practitioners all throughout the United States. And I started looking into um, the YouTube channel of Eileen Duran, the gal that I've actually hired. I'm working with her right now. And I became a huge fan of hers and um, have since found her on Instagram. Uh, Spirit Raw Tropical Healing is her um, is her handle uh, on Instagram and YouTube. I'll, I'll type it um, in the chat or, you know what, maybe I'll add it. I'll, maybe I'll add it into the email tomorrow um, just because it's hard for me to chat and teach at the same time <laughs> to type and chat. Um, but anyhow. So I ended up not working with Eileen four years ago. I ended up uh, working with a colleague of mine um, in uh, Purium named Carrie Drinkwine because I'd met her at our company's convention that summer. And I just knew that I needed to go yeah. wrong. I knew that I needed to, um, uh, I, I knew the benefit of herbs. And so I worked with Carrie for three months and um, I don't really remember a lot about those three months, except for the last month where I was 100% fruit for an entire month. And lucky for me, I was in California. I was in Los Angeles and I, um, uh, it was like just an incredibly hot September. I was house sitting for a friend and it was really easy to do fruit for an entire month. And I ended up doing grapes for an entire week of that month, just grapes for seven days. So there's a lot more I could say about that, um, but you can look into Dr. Morse on YouTube. You can look into The Grape Cure. There's a book called The Grape Cure if you want to learn more about how grapes um, help folks that have tumors and cancer and cysts and all kinds of stuff. Grapes are incredible. Organic grapes are the best. And, um, I'm going to stop for a moment here and just check out the chat. Mm -hmm. Great Chevy. Uh, what I have to share here with you, I think is going to help you. Lindsay, need to understand nutritional part of raw veganism. How do we make sure we get everything we need? Is this a deficit? Is raw vegan short-term detox protocol wanting to learn how to do it right? Beautiful, Lindsay. Maria. Okay, about 70% raw. I love hearing about everyone's journey. Beautiful. Thank you for being here, Maria. So great. Debbie, to learn more for myself and my clients, want to for a short time to shake up my health. Yeah. So. I love hearing that, Debbie, and I want to speak to that for a moment. So when I was at Hope for Cancer in Mexico, um, Dr. Antonio Jimenez, or Tony to his friends, um, said that we want to be changing our diet every three months. Every three months. So, so you know, embarking on a raw vegan protocol, even just for three months in summer, is going to really shake things up for you. No question. 
And you can either do what I've done and hire someone like Eileen, if you know you need to do a deep dive like I did, and I'll say more about why in a moment, or you can simply just go to Dr. Morse's um, website and they have counselors there. They have incredible herbal products um, in Dr. Morse's apothecary. I, I, they're not easy to take. <laughs> the herbs are really intense. Um, but when I start my own investigations, my own research around what these herbs are doing for me, and I'm starting to really feel so much better, you guys. Um, it's been, you know, it's been, it's been good. It's been a good thing. The transition has been taking some time and I'll be talking more about that in a moment. Um, Kristen going vegan has changed my life. Wow. How long have you been vegan, Kristen? Rachel. Um, since I started Purium. Okay. Pretty much. Now I, I can't say that I'm completely, I gave up dairy. Um, but I do have a little piece of chicken here and there from time to time if I make it and I know where it came from. <laughs> yeah, cool. But I'm pretty much just fruits, veggies. And then I do cook my veggies. So I've been seeing what you're doing and everything is just completely raw and it looks amazing. So yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely want to go deeper and more raw instead of even cooked veggies, just raw. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel, I've been vegan a long time lately. I've been on the fence of going raw. I'd love to know more about how raw can change things for us. Beautiful. Naeva, learning how to support myself and others into raw vegan for regenerative health. Right. So uh, you're all here for, I, I, I love hearing your, your unique um, voices about what brought you here. Because there's some people here that I'm kind of surprised that you're here. But what I'm tuning into is that the raw vegan piece is really um, the edge that you're all working. So, and I, I really respect that because I love cooked food, you guys. I love cooked food. I love all food. <laughs> and um, I am going raw vegan for many reasons. Um, and I'll share what those reasons are now. So it's my understanding that when we are working to deeply heal the body, okay, I'm 58 years old. I have, even with all the cleansing that I've been doing with Puriam, I have issues in my body that are showing up in my eyes in, in terms of weaknesses right? So Eileen is an iridologist and she studied my one good eye, my right eye. And she was able to pinpoint all the things that were going on in my body that we needed to address. But I want to go back to March. Um, so some of you know that I've been dealing with a back injury. Before that back injury, it was like late February, early March, I was really looking at Eileen's material. I was on her, her um, website. I was on her YouTube channel and I was stalking her IG profile. And I was like, I really, I think I need to work with Eileen. Like I was just feeling this call. I need, I want to feel better in my body. That was the thrust for me. And this was before a very debilitating back injury that to this day is still plaguing me in a much minor way than it was throughout a lot of March and April. Um, yeah, it's been ongoing and quite mysterious. Um, I didn't fall. I didn't sneeze. I didn't, you know, do anything physical seemingly to injure my back. I'm pretty sure it's mostly emotional. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever wrote, read, um, read that book, The Body Keeps the Score. So what I'm learning is that, you know, the only way to heal in our lives, we must do it through the body. It's got to happen through the body. And so, so much has been coming up for me since I made the decision to hire Eileen 
and to go raw vegan. And so my understanding is number one, when we cook food, we lose nutrients. We lose enzymes and we lose nutrients. So when we eat raw, all those nutrients, all those enzymes are intact. And we are supporting the body to, um, to nourish the body and to detox by eating raw vegan food. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about raw vegan versus high raw vegan, because you hear that term used. And I, I contacted Eileen the other day and I'm like, what is the difference? <laughs> I don't understand. So high raw vegan means that somebody is eating like I would say 90% and higher. They are doing raw. Okay. Raw vegan is probably more like, um, you know, 90 to 80% and lower. They're just eating um, a raw vegan diet and maybe like 20% or more cooked food. Okay. Um, now I love Kristen that you brought up chicken because I want to speak to this. First of all, you're not going to put me in any box ever. <laughs> That's just not who I am. You're never going to be able to put me into a box and go, Oh, Steph, she's a raw vegan. You know, no, I, 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 I love animal protein. I'm not one of those vegans that, you know, and I'm sorry if I'm going to offend some of my friends here who are vegan for the animals, because you've taught me a lot. My friends who are vegan for the animals have taught me a lot. And I've released pork um, as a result of my, my vegan friends. Um, well, I released pork for the cancer too, but I don't ever want to eat pork again. There's just, and I doubt that I'll ever eat red meat again. Um, but I still enjoy chicken and I still enjoy salmon and um, eggs, even though I know all the things about eggs, Rachel, <laughs> I still enjoy eggs. So um, yeah, I think that, you know, I think that there are degrees of bringing raw food into your diet, raw vegan food into your diet. Um, and periodically having animal protein, if you know that's what you need. I really believe in bio-individuality, and I really think we need to listen to what our bodies are telling us about what we need. And it's so funny, my mom, the other day, she does not understand at all why I'm doing this. No clue, none whatsoever. She walks away the other day, we, she was over visiting and she goes, oh, how long do you have to do this for? And I said, 90 days. And she goes, oh, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'm like, don't feel sorry for me. I'm choosing to do this and I'm called to do this and you could support me <laughs> and show your confidence in me that I'm doing right by my body, you know? Cause she just, she hasn't changed her diet in 82 years. You know, she's 82. She doesn't understand the whole superfood thing that I'm in. Like she just, it's just not her thing at all. So if you're listening to me and you've got your, your, your parents to change their diets or to get into superfoods, like you've got two thumbs up from me because my mom is just in an, her own world. And I call her you know, an energizer bunny. Cause she's like constantly on the go, never sick. Well, she does, she gets colds periodically, but that's about it anyways. So she's just a funny gal. My mama, I love you. And you drive me crazy. So, <laughs> um, the grape info. So Beth, um, the grape cure is a book. I have it over here on my, um, on my, my bookshelf. It's a, uh, uh, it's utilizing grapes, predominantly red grapes are better than green grapes to pull toxins out of the body. And you could probably Google or YouTube Google grape cleanse or grape cure 
and get a lot of resources to pop up for you about that. Um, I've just heard so many stories over the last four years about how grapes have really healed people. So right on. Okay. So let me just, I'm just going to take a little sip of my watermelon juice. One moment. I'm a juicing fiend right now, you guys. I juice two and three times a day, sometimes more, mostly fruit juices and sometimes green juices. And I'll say more about that shortly. All right. I want to talk about the mindset to succeed with a raw vegan diet for um, a short period of time or a longer period of time. So because it, it, you really do need to work your mind. Like it's really, really important to get on board with the decision to go raw vegan. Cause it's really easy to talk yourself out of it. <laughs> Even for me, who's hired, a, you know, a detox specialist. Um, I'm like, but I really want those Siete chips right now. <laughs> you know? I want those, those, you know, healthy, organic, processed foods right now, you know, that's not raw vegan. Okay. So I've been battling <laughs> with myself because I really love Siete lime chips. Um, and so I kind of got to talk, I got to talk myself into it like every day. N now that I'm like really very near that whole high raw vegan there's still a couple things that I'm enjoying periodically. So uh, you might wonder what, so I'm just going to transparently share what is hard for me to let go of. And Eileen's really cool about it. You know, she's like, Oh, Steph, I get it. She's like, I, I was a total chipaholic, you know, when I was telling her about the Siete chips, I'm like, I'm having a really hard time. And then I took a bite of one the other day. It was so salty. I couldn't even handle it. So I've just stopped buying the Siete chips. Bye-bye Siete chips. So she's like, you know, and before I, before I, I, um, I didn't buy it in the grocery store the other day, she's like, well, you know, stuff, what you don't have in the house, you won't eat. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> As I wave at my chocolates <laughs> in my pantry, my son's going to be here tomorrow. I'm like, can you please eat all the chocolates in my pantry? I haven't been eating them at all. And interestingly, my mom says to me the other day, she goes, what about a sweet tooth? Do you have a sweet tooth? I'm like, mom, fruit is sweet. <laughs> I'm like, I'm juicing and eating fruit every single day, you know? So yeah, perfect, Maria. Uh-huh, little dulse. Beautiful. You know what? Actually, that's a really good idea. I can be sprinkling that on my salads. Thank you, Maria. Cause I always have dulse, um, for my heavy metal detox smoothie. It's always in my pantry. Um, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment about a juicer Chevy. Great question. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to succeed if you give yourself a transition time. So commit to like two weeks or three weeks, weeks. For me, it took me about two to three weeks to like eat up all the eggs, eat up all the tofu because there's no tofu. There's no tempeh in the raw vegan reality of my life at the moment. Well, that's for my, that's my reality. It, it would be potentially for you, but not for me. Um, there's no legumes in this diet at all. No hummus. <laughs> I love hummus. It's like a staple in my diet. Um, so, but it's okay. You know, it's just like, it's not forever. It's just for now I'm doing this to heal my body. Um, and you know, I've got more stuff going on than most in my body. You all know that I had the cancer diagnosis and I've been dealing with heavy metal toxicity with my left eye and now this back thing. And so I, I just want to share with you something that Eileen said to me, because this is fascinating, um, particularly for you, Rachel, because Rachel's a detox specialist in her own right. So when I was uh, my first session with Eileen, which was like 
two hours and 20 minutes. Like she took a long time with me. It was like, we just went into this detox zone, you know, it was really cool getting to know each other. So I told her I was about to hire my chiropractor to work with him for three months as well. And, you know, the investment for Eileen was a lot. Um, and then I had to purchase herbs on top of that, like about six to $700 worth of herbs on top of that. And so my chiropractor was asking me to spend $700 a month with him. And I'm like, holy smokes, <laughs> this is getting way out of control. And, um, but again, I was really concerned about my back and, you know, when you're in pain and you're not feeling well, it's like, okay, how much, you know, this is what allopathy does to us over and over again. It's like, oh, they get us really afraid. And then they're like, oh, and here's your bill, you know, gazillions of dollars later for all the tests and the drugs and, you know, the specialists that one works with when, when they go to work with allo allopathic doctors. Anyhow, what Eileen said, which was absolutely fascinating to me was, Stephanie, your back will align with this detox. And I was like, what? She said, I've seen it over and over and over again with my clients, their backs align. So you guys, I'm taking like lymphatic herbs. I'm taking endocrine herbs. I'm taking brain herbs. I'm taking eye herbs, uh, parasite herbs. I am taking herbs three times a day. Uh, and they're all in alcohol. So um, yeah, that's always a trip to my system too, because I don't drink alcohol anymore. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm a little woozy on the herbs. <laughs> so um, so yeah, how about that? The back will align when we do that deep of a detox. So the reason why we want to be raw vegan during this deep of a detox is because we want to support the body to do what it needs to do to remove the acids, the toxins, the parasites, the heavy metals, all the things. And to be, so the, the really, the end game really is to be going all fruit. Like, I think that if I was in Costa Rica or Mexico, like I could just be doing fruit for 90 days. No problem juicing and fruiting for 90 days in that heat that would not be hard for me up here in the pacific northwest you know we had some days that were 80 degrees a couple of weeks ago which was amazing but right now it's back to you know the high 50s so um but i'm i'm well into the raw vegan diet now so i'm not vacillating with you know craving cooked foods i mean don't get me wrong i can't wait to be eating cooked foods again. <laughs> I'm just going to be totally honest with you guys. Um, I don't think there's any way that I could be raw vegan forever. Um, as good as it might be for me, I think I'll probably just keep doing bits of time, you know, where I do for a month or two, um, I go raw vegan. So and I don't, I am, I might be going longer than 90 days on this protocol um, because I might want to, like, I don't want to just cap it off at 90 days. I might go into the fall um, and then work with Eileen in a continuous way to sort of, you know, have the transition into cooked foods as it gets colder here. Um, and do it in a way that I can still be detoxing, if that makes sense. So just really leaning into her expertise um, so that I can have an ongoing detox that goes a bit longer than um, 90 days. So I want to be clear here because I don't think I share this. When I was a young girl, I received an epilepsy diagnosis. And according to my doctor at the time, he had no idea how I got this epilepsy. He said I might've fallen on my head. I'm like, well, I think I would have known if I'd fallen on my head. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was from the fact that there was mercury in the vaccines up in Canada and that that triggered epileptic seizures in my body for seven years. So for those seven years, my mother, not knowing any better, gave me these Dilantin chewable um, pharmaceutical drugs that I took for seven years, you guys. Wintergreen flavor. Do you think I can eat anything wintergreen flavor? No, never. Get thee behind me. I'll never do wintergreen ever. So in though in those pharmaceuticals, I'm pretty sure there was sulfur. And so I've struggled with constipation my entire life. So when you see me posting in my healing cancer naturally group that I'm excited to be having three and four bowel movements a day, it's been life-changing. Having that many bowel movements a day is so liberating. The food is in you and it's out of you. It's in you and it's out of you. It's in you and it's out of you. And um, there was a moment when I needed to slow the detox because I had about seven bowel movements in one day, which was way too many. And my poor little pooper was super raw. Um, if that ever happens to you, you just put a little bit of um, uh, coconut oil and it was fine the next day. So succeeding with raw veganism for a small or a longer period of time, you, you've got to give yourself transitionary period of time to do that. And if you make a commitment to yourself, I'm going to give myself two weeks to eat up all the things in the pantry or in the in the um, refrigerator, that's really going to help you, right? Because if it's not there, you won't eat it. I mean, there was even things in my refrigerator or my freezer that I had to eat up before I could feel good about. <laughs> it's just my process, right? So, but now my fridge, holy smokes, my fridge is apples on the left, oranges on the right, two huge drawers full. I've got um, in there right now, I've got two things of celery, fennel, a ton of cucumbers, a ton of um, uh, lettuces, romaine, spinach, um, uh, spring mix, uh, sprouts, peppers, onions, uh, lemons, limes, um, and then some some dressings i've been making a lot of dressings so i'm going to be sending you my two favorite dressings via email tomorrow so stay tuned for that uh through my purium superfoods community we've been learning a lot um thanks to rachel balansat and the medical medium about um just reducing oil period in our diets which makes so much sense to me and so I've been having a lot of fun experimenting with no oil dressing. So I'll be sharing my favorite dressings um, tomorrow. Okay. Processed sugar feeds cancer. Fruit sugar is way different. Yes, it is. So, Ray, no, it's not, Chevy. Such a good question. So I learned this once and for all, but other people have spoken to it since, but I learned it at Hope for Cancer. So the molecule of refined sugar spins one way and fruit sugar spins another way. And the cancer, um, cancer cells like to uptake the refined sugar spinning, um, the one, the, you know, the way that it spins, but you can eat as much fruit as you like. And, you know, Dr. Moore speaks to this beautifully. Um, so yeah, go go ahead and do your own research, Chevy. Uh, the medical medium also talks about uh, fruit and the importance of eating fruit. It is just, it's the highest vibrational food on the planet, fruit, raw fruit, highest vibrational food on the planet. And you, um, you only want to eat, you want to eat melons on their own because they are pre-digested. And so they, they digest a little bit differently than other fruits. So we always eat melons uh, on their own. 
But yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question, Chevy. Great question. So the other thing that you're going to want as you're transitioning is inspiration. Inspiration. I pulled out this book that I've had in my library forever called Raw Power. Had it forever in my um in my library. Building strength and muscle naturally. So it's it's written by this dude, like this guy who's like the photos he's like a full-on bodybuilder and he has all these incredible recipes in here so i'm getting a lot of inspiration from this book and then i'm also finding some amazing um instagram profiles oh my god jackfruit watermelon check her out jackfruit watermelon and spirit tropical healing but instead of T R O P, it's T R A W, raw, tropical, tropical. Okay. That's Eileen, the gal I'm working with. So that inspiration, tuning into other people that are doing the raw vegan lifestyle is really inspiring. And then there's some amazing YouTubers as well. Maria has been tuning me into vegan some vegan YouTubers, because you can't, you can't get enough inspiration when it comes to changing your diet like this, because you need to learn about, well, how do I make dressings with cashews in them? Oh, you soak them for an hour. Well, how do I make, you know, what? A, <laughs> and actually I'm supposed to be going off of nuts in the next month. No, bye-bye nuts. Ah! <laughs> no nuts and minimal seeds. So um, just moving in that direction of super high, 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 raw, just fruit. That's the direction I'm going. Fruit and herbs, fruit and herbs. So to get in deep and get that crap out of me, the sulfur, right? The sulfur from the Dilantin, those pharmaceuticals that I had for the epilepsy, those anti-seizing drugs that actually didn't help me at all when I was a child, not at all. I continued to have petty mal, grand mal seizures the entire seven years. <sighs> Anyways, I don't anymore. And I'm really grateful. I don't have seizures anymore. My health has come so far, you guys. Oh my God. Even though I'm still struggling with the eye thing and the cancer thing and the back and, you know, it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. So, yeah, we have to give thanks for what we do have, you know? And I just, I knew that it could be better. I just, I inherently, intuitively knew back in late February, I know I can feel a lot better. And this is the way for me. I just knew it the way with a capital W, right? <laughs> All right. So I want to talk about, you know, if you aren't doing raw that much at all, um, I know many of you that are here do already, um, but there might be some of you that are just like, maybe you had this misconception about fruit that ha that comes up in my community all the time. Misconception about fruit. You want to be eating more fruit and vegetables. Why? I call them sun food. Food that is energized by the sun. The sun goes into that fruit and vegetables, makes it these beautiful colors. Then we put that into our body in raw form. It doesn't get any more primo. You want that energy from the sun in your body. We human beings, we need the sun. We need the sun for vitamin D. We need the sun for our fruits and vegetables. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So, um, so preparing your kitchen and your pantry, we did talk a little bit about that. Um, and like I said, you want to give yourself transition time, but all those things that I just mentioned are going to be staples as you go raw vegan. Oh, I forgot to mention cabbage, cabbage right now. I don't know what is going on with me, but it is so delicious to me right now the crunch, 
the color of the purple cabbage in my salads. I'm like, bring on the purple cabbage. (laughs) And I just bought some Savoy cabbage yesterday, organic Savoy cabbage. And then of course you've got the regular green cabbage, but you know, crunch matters to me in terms of the mouthfeel, which I think is why I love the Siete chips. And so you get that crunch with cabbage. So you're going to want to, you know, have all these fresh fruits and vegetables in your fridge to be drawing from. Oh my God. I didn't even talk about melons. Oh my gosh. So I cannot, you know, many of you know me, I've sort of been the self-described organic freak. Okay. On this journey, however, I can't be as organically freakish as I'd like to be. Why? Because there's no organic melons on the market right now. None. I'm looking for them constantly, except for maybe the baby watermelons you can find organic. So, and, and I eat melon every day. I eat cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon every single day. It is so delicious. I cut it all up and I put it in my little glass containers with the plastic tops. And, um, uh, and then I get to eat it, you know, cold, delicious, crisp. It's just perfect way for me to eat melon. I've been that way about melon ever since Zephyr was inside of me. (laughs) I had a total, um, thing about watermelon. I used to say that Zephyr, my son is made of watermelon because I ate so much watermelon, two watermelons a week, just, just me. (laughs) And I'd cut it up and I'd put it into these cubes in the fridge and then I would eat it. It was so delicious. So yeah, as you know, as it gets warmer and more organic fruit is coming, like the organic stone fruit is coming, the organic grapes are coming. Thank God. I've been waiting for the organic grapes for weeks. And so I have had a little bit of non-organic grapes, which I never like to do. Uh, yeah, knowing how grapes are sprayed, it's like, oh God, but every night with my, um, my GI broom, gastrointestinal broom, which is a product you can go look for on Dr. Morse's website. I take it every night with either apple juice or, um, grape juice. So one night I'm apple next night, I'm grape, apple, grape, apple, grape, back and forth. And so that just pulls all the toxins. You know, we detox at night, you guys, we detox at night. So the GI broom with those fruit juices, I I juice them fresh every night. So I'm in the kitchen constantly. So you do have to allow a lot of time to nourish yourself. You need a lot of time and you need to prepare if you're going to travel anywhere. And I'll talk about that in a moment. It's really important that you bring food with you. Okay. So releasing cooked foods. This is the biggest thing that we have to do as we look at raw veganism. Cooked foods are addictive. They're addictive. And so the more you go towards a raw vegan diet, the less addictive they are. I'm not craving cooked foods right now at all. Not at all. Your taste buds change. What your body tells you that it wants changes. You got to listen to that. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're going to be just finding new ways of preparing raw foods so that they're delicious because we're, we're pretty attached to making cooked foods delicious. So I have been the salad maker my entire life in my family to this day, Steph, can you bring a salad? Steph, can you bring a salad? Whenever we have a family dinner, Steph, can you bring a salad? I'm like, yes, I can, because I make freaking beautiful salads. So what is a beautiful salad for me? A beautiful salad has multi colors in it. It has many different textures in it, 
but it, it can be simple. And so what do I mean by that? So I love Greek salad, love Greek salad. I love feta cheese. That's the one thing that I'd let myself have periodically since I got the cancer diagnosis is I'd let myself have feta cheese, um, goat cheese. So preferably if I can find the goat feta. So I just, there's some things in the, my diet that I absolutely love. And so I'm not doing any goat or cow dairy right now at all. And I love Greek salad. So what do I do? I've got my tomatoes, my cucumbers, my peppers, my red onions, and my Kalamata olives. And I will put that on a bed of romaine lettuce with some sprouts and, you know, create a vinaigrette or some sort of dressing that has no oil in it. And I'm in heaven. It's my way of doing Greek salads. So, um, I love, love, love to put grated carrots into my, um, uh, into my salads. I love radishes, uh, cabbage, like I mentioned for the crunch. And, um, I really like onions. So either spring onions or red onions, uh, and avocado can't get enough of that avocado. I have avocados waiting to be eaten every single day. Um, on my counter. I also sometimes buy prepared guacamole just because it's easy. Like I went to Costco the other day and I, I found prepared organic guacamole. Um, and so if I'm in between avocado ripeness, then I'll have some of the prepared guacamole. And I also buy prepared pico de gallo. So pico de gallo in and of itself can just be like a dressing. Um, I've been, you know, on this path for so long now that sometimes for me, even just lemon juice can be a dressing, you know? Um, yeah. So one of the things I'm having a hard time releasing that is cooked <laughs> is dolmades. So I've been eating dolmades, which is Greek stuffed uh, grape leaves stuffed with either quinoa or um, rice. I just, I love them. I absolutely love them with salad. So every now and again, I will have dolmades, but all of that is going to be, so I'm, I'm kind of still in transition mode. <laughs> um, and, uh, but if you're doing raw vegan, like you can, you can have those little, you know, add-ons that they're, yeah, they're cooked, but um, it's so minimal. You know, you're mostly doing a big fat salad with these like two domates, you know? So, um, and you can do olives are cool for raw vegan. That's a really great way to, um, to, uh, flavor your salads, capers. You can make dressings with capers. They have so much flavor capers. So now let's talk about juicing. Um, you definitely are, you need a juicer to, to, for the raw vegan lifestyle. There's no way of getting around it. Uh, I don't think, um, I have an Omega juicer. I bought it when I first moved up here to Bainbridge Island. And I bought it because it was the model that my sister had. <laughs> I'd left a juicer with my roommates, um, down in Los Angeles when I moved away from LA. And, um, uh, cause I knew I was going to buy myself a hefty juicer. It was a Breville and it was, um, so let's talk about juices for a moment. So um, there are some juicers right now on the market that you can like throw the whole cucumber in and it juices it straight up or the whole, you know, apple in and it juices it. You don't have to cut because cutting takes a lot of time. So um, you want to, um, you know, research because they're not cheap. They're like $500. So um, Nama is a brand. Um, Hiram is a brand that I see mentioned a lot. Nama Hiram, mine's an Omega. If you're on a budget, go into offer up or Facebook marketplace. I cannot even tell you how many people buy juicers and never take them out of the box and you can buy them used for $60. Okay. Or less. That's what I did in California. Um, several years back before I moved up here to Washington state. Okay. So I juice the watermelon 
um, every other day I juice watermelon. So I always have watermelon on my, um, uh, uh, you know, in my fridge or on my um, kitchen counter. Sometimes I'll add um, a quarter of a lime uh, to just give it uh, that delicious little lime flavoring uh, into the watermelon juice. It's so delicious and so thirst quenching. And again, I put my big fat watermelon into the fridge because I like my watermelon juice cold in the mornings when I have it, I like it cold. So, um, and then I juice orange juice every other day. So I'm constantly buying organic oranges and yes, you peel the oranges before you juice them. You do not have to pit them though. You don't have to pit any fruit before you juice it. And then, um, I also make a orange carrot ginger juice or an orange carrot turmeric juice that is delicious. I love that juice so much. So, so why, let's say if I was feeling like my body was like, just, it was too much of just orange juice, then you can add in the carrot and it'll downplay the acids in the orange juice a little bit. And then of course, turmeric helps to fight inflammation. Ginger is good for everything. Um, so then I also make a, um, a green juice. There's so many different green juices you can make. You can just do a pure green juice of just cucumber juice or just celery juice, but I like to blend my veggie juices. So I make this veggie juice. I just love it. I'm, I probably will never make another juice just because I love this juice so much. It is, um, one whole head of celery one fennel bulb and all the top sprouts of the fennel, um, a lemon, three green apples, and one whole head of parsley. So that's my green juice. Did I mention the cucumber? One cucumber. That's my green juice. It is such a delicious juice. It usually lasts me two days because it's a lot of green juice and it's very delicious. You know, I actually can't really speak to lectins. Um, Chevy, I'm not really sure. I'm not really the person to talk about that. Um, you're going to have to do your own research there. <laughs> Pico, Pico de Gallo. Yeah. Trader Joe's. I know stuff. Great, please. I know. I love them. So that's like an addiction for me, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm working on releasing. So, um, uh, so dehydrated foods. So there are, there are many raw vegans that allow themselves to have dehydrated foods. They buy dehydrators. They make dehydrated pizza crust. They make dehydrated crackers. Um, and they incorporate that as, um, they make bread, dehydrated bread for sandwiches, wraps, um, so that you can factor that into a raw vegan diet as well. Um, and you can buy veggie wraps online, veggie crackers, dehydrated crackers online, or you can make them your own. I don't have a dehydrator. Um, I'm still making smoothies. Um, so I'm still making the, the, um, the heavy metal detox smoothie, uh, which is a smoothie that I learned about from the medical medium that helped me to eliminate severe, severe migraine headaches, one to three a week. And then after I um, uh, healed the daytime migraine headaches, I was having nighttime uh, migraine, mellow, bit mellower migraine headaches, but they'd still wake me up and I toss and I turn. And so those are gone now too. So smoothies, I put in a little bit of our, um, you know, uh, well, if you want the heavy metal detox smoothie, just message me and I'll get it to you. Cause I do include our Purium superfoods in that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about travel as a raw vegan. When you travel, you can prepare your food, you know, have a little cooler, and then one of the things that I've got is our um, juice bar in a bag from Purium, which has the green spectrum, the carrot juice, the um, can't beat this, 
and the aloe vera. And I think I'm forgetting one. Maybe that's it. So the, that, those juices, when you're traveling and you're in a pinch, you can make up a juice really rapidly and have a beverage on the go. So I am doing some traveling this summer. And so I've purchased all these because why not? So, and if you want to learn more about how to get a, a, um, a discount code for me to purchase Perium, reach out and I can get that for you. All right. We are down at the bottom of the hour. I cannot even bio fruit. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> I cannot even believe how much, how, how fast the time went, like shocking. So because I'm realizing that um, transitioning to a raw vegan diet could use some support, I've decided to create a support group for those of you that would like support. Okay. So if you will allow me, I'd like to share with you what that could look like if this is for you. Okay. So I will be supporting you to plan and prepare your fridge and your pantry, what to release and what to acquire. I will be giving you shopping lists. I will be supporting you with the mindset and the accountability to do the thing, to actually, you know, make the change. Um, and cause I had support, you know, I had support with Eileen. So having support can really help. Um, I will be um, supporting you in juicing how much to juice. And uh, cause this is a thing, like some people juice a ton and then they've got days of juice and you don't want days of juice in the fridge. You want to be juicing and drinking it, juicing and drinking it. So I can support you on how much um, to be juicing and then um, acquiring your juicer too. You can, you know, use me to support you in doing that. And then there are many raw vegan folks out there that juice all day and then they eat um, veggies at night. So that, you know, that is one, one thing that you can do and we can talk more about that and how you can mix that up. Okay. Cause you might not want to just do salads at night. You might want to do salads at lunch and then juice and fruit into the evening. It's up to you. So we'll be talking about that. And then I have so many favorite salads and vegan meals to support you with your transition. And I'll be sharing all of those in the support group. So if this interests you, I want to give you an opportunity to register today. Um, we will be beginning June 6th and we'll be going until July 18th, six week support group with me. All right. And um, it's $66 payable to my Venmo. Uh, here, I'm just going to put this in here for those of you that want to do this. Um, my Venmo is Radiant Dawn is my handle. Um, and or PayPal is sacredbirth at me.com. So if you want to join me for six weeks, we start next Tuesday, same time um, at 4.30 Pacific and 7.30 Eastern. And I'm offering a raw vegan support group to help you transition to raw vegan for a little bit of time or, um, or longer, depending on what you want to do. And it's my honor and my pleasure to support you. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. I hope that you receive benefit from your time here with me. And if you have any questions, I'm going to um, stop the recording, but I will um, stay on for questions. <laughs>